Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to go over the Slack Certified Admin Exam Guide. You can find this on slackcertified.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. So on the first page, the Admin Exam Guide starts with an overview, explaining how this certification is designed to verify your skills and knowledge that will demonstrate your ability to be a Slack admin. Similar to certifications such as the Salesforce Admin Cert, getting certified in general allows you to show others that you've passed a proctored exam where you were required to demonstrate your knowledge of the Slack platform in an admin capacity. If we move on to qualifications, Slack does recommend that you have at least six to 12 months of real world experience as a Slack admin. I know a lot of people are new to technologies such as Slack and Salesforce. I was when I first entered the ecosystem and I didn't have that experience that's recommended. Don't let that deter you from pursuing this certification. Slack provides a list of topics that you should have a moderate level of familiarity with, such as admin roles, Slack architecture, user provisioning, settings and policies. I'm not going to read the whole list because at the end of the day, if you're new to Slack, you're probably not familiar with all of these, which is why they recommend that you take the Slack certified admin prep course. I took this course myself. From my experience, it was a great course. It covered all these topics in detail. If we move on to the about the exam section, as I mentioned earlier in the video, this is a proctored certification. It's very similar to the Salesforce certification process. It's not proctored through the same website as Salesforce. The exam format is 60 multiple choice questions and you'll have 90 minutes to complete the exam. The passing score is 62%. This exam is not an open note exam, meaning you're not allowed to have anything when starting the exam. The one thing I really liked about this exam was unlike Salesforce exams, the exam will end once you've answered enough questions to achieve a passing or a failing score. This is unique because you don't have to go through all 60 questions if you've reached a passing score, but at the same token, the exam will end if you've answered too many questions incorrectly and you failed the exam. I like that feature a lot only because it sort of saves you time. So if we move on to page three, the exam registration fee is $150 USD. The retake policy is also pretty interesting. So when you pay the $150 to take your exam, you'll automatically receive one additional exam retake at no additional cost. As I've mentioned a couple times now, the exam delivery method is online proctored. There are no prerequisites for this exam, but it is recommended that you take the Slack certified admin prep course. And also a shameless plug, I do recommend that you watch my Slack admin mini course playlist on this YouTube channel. My playlist isn't meant to replace the Slack certified course, but rather to help solidify the topics that are covered in that course. The videos I create are short and to the point and cover some of the main topics that are on the exam. The available exam languages are in English, Japanese, and German. Within this exam guide, Slack provides a quick start exam guide. I'm not going to click on that, but I'm going to leave a link to this exam guide. So if you want to learn more about the quick start exam guide, you can just click on this link. If we move on to the exam outline, these are all the topics that are going to be covered in the exam. You can find each of these workshops in that Slack admin prep course. So the prep course starts with workshop one, which are the fundamentals, 8% of the exam. In this workshop, you're going to need to know how to summarize the key privileges and responsibilities of each Slack user role. You're going to need to know how to identify the unique features of each Slack paid plan, how to identify the common responsibilities of Slack admins and owner roles. And finally, you'll need to know how to identify workspace and org level settings and dashboards. If we move on to workshop two, this is workspace administration and it's 13% of the exam. This workshop will cover how to determine when to create a workspace or a channel to meet the needs of an organization, how to manage the workspace creation request process, how to choose a workspace visibility setting that meets the needs of the members and or an organization, how to prepare an enterprise grid design that meets the needs of the members and organization, and finally, how to recommend how to consolidate workspaces. If we move on to workshop three, channel and user group administration, this is 22% of the exam, which is actually the largest weight out of all the topics covered on the exam. So this is an extremely important workshop to study and understand. Some of the things that you're going to need to know that are covered in this workshop are how to set up and administer Slack channels, how to recommend when to use a channel, a direct message, or a group direct message, how to recommend when to use a public or private channel, how to recommend when to use an org wide channel or a multi workspace channel, how to administer channel posting permissions, how to recommend when to share a channel with an outside organization, which you'll eventually learn this is done via Slack Connect. You're going to need to know how to demonstrate how to manage connections, channels, and direct messages with outside organizations, 
how to establish channel naming guidelines and set recommended prefixes to meet the needs of the organization, how to administer policies to manage the status or the state of channels, for example, deleting channels, archiving channels, and converting channels. And finally, how to recognize when to use and how to set up Slack user groups. So far, we've only gone through the first three workshops of this exam. Many of the topics within these three workshops, I've already created videos on the Slack admin mini course playlist. Most of those videos aren't even that long. So if you want to watch the videos before you even start the course, or if you want to watch them in parallel, I highly recommend you do that. If we move on to workshop four, workshop four is user lifecycle management, which is 17% of the exam. This is tied as the second largest weighted topic on the exam. In this workshop, you'll learn how to implement the best authentication option based on the Slack plan and the organization's requirements. You'll learn how to recommend a process for a new account creation for different use cases. You'll learn how to recommend when to use system for cross-domain identity management, also known as SCIM, to provision users. You'll learn how to recommend a process for getting new users into the right workspace or workspaces. You'll learn how to demonstrate the two ways full member accounts can be deactivated through manual deactivation versus SEIM deprovisioning. And finally, you'll learn how to create a guest user request and approval process. Moving on to workshop five, app administration, which is 12%. In this workshop, you'll learn how to summarize the value of interoperability for decision makers and end users, how to use workflow builder to automate routine tasks and manual business processes how to understand the app installation process. And finally, you'll learn how to set up and manage an app approval process. Moving on to workshop six, security, which makes up 17% of the exam. You'll learn how to identify Slack product security features and settings to meet an organization's security needs. You'll also learn how to describe how Slack prioritizes security governance, risk management, and compliance, and how to identify examples of each. You'll learn how to describe product features that manage access and mobile devices to meet specific business needs. You'll learn how to recommend product features that protect and manage sensitive data to meet specific business needs. You'll learn how to recommend product features that govern information to meet specific business needs. And finally, you'll learn how to recommend when to audit user activity in Slack. Moving on to the final workshop, workshop seven, enabling Slack success, which is 12% of the exam. In this workshop, you'll learn how to develop a vision and identify goals for Slack at an organization. You'll learn how to use the analytics dashboard to track Slack usage. You'll learn how to make recommendations based on analytics data. For example, channel archival, work with Slack champions, and publish a Slack etiquette guide. You'll learn how to build Slack teams to maintain a workspace or an org based on best practices. You'll learn how to enable admins to promote Slack as a digital HQ for the organization. And finally, you'll learn how to promote member engagement with specific settings, policies, and programs. So that's it for all the workshop. Those are all the topics that are covered within the exam. So for this last part of the exam guide, I actually think it's more important for you to read rather than me to read over a video. This is because it goes over the participant agreement. It's really up to you to read the terms and conditions that are outlined in this agreement. So I recommend that you personally review this exam guide and you click this link to learn more. The exam retake policy is pretty straightforward. After the first attempt, you must wait 24 hours. After your second failed attempt, you must wait 14 days. And after your third failed attempt, you must wait 28 days before registering for the exam again. These are just some of the retake exemptions. Like I had mentioned in the beginning of this video, the test is proctored through Examity. So you'll have to reach out to the Examity team to reschedule your exam if you face any of these issues. This section just outlines the exam reschedule policy cancellation refund policy, and how to maintain your exam. The certifications are valid 18 months from the date you pass the exam. So just keep that in mind. And then finally, there's a dispute section. Again, this is something you can review on your own time. So that's the entire Slack certified admin exam guide. Like I've mentioned many times in this video, I highly encourage you to review this guide yourself. That's all I have for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you all for watching today and I'll see you in the next video.